I was doing an audio check for Commissioner Colville. Can you hear me? Morning in progress. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Evening, everybody. Hello there. Hi, Nick. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's going. <laughs> How about yourself? A <laughs> good answer. I'll, I'll go with the same. <laughs> I like it. Hi, everyone. I'm just, I'll be right back on. I'm just going to call in. Good evening, everyone. I will be uh back on when we get started proper. Good evening, all. Hey, Commissioner Zissa, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. A video on? Yeah. JJ, can you put this away, please? <clears throat> Hello, Mike. It's doing, everybody. Good evening. Hello, Mr. Eastwood. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet all of you in our virtual setting. So great, great to see you all. Happy, happy to be here. Welcome well, to Canada. I Thank didn't you. know that, that we hired Patrick Marlowe. My goodness. Okay. Rob, I, I, I can't be the first person to say you look just like Patty Marlowe. I, I've never heard that before. People usually oh, like man. my last name. That's a good call, Nick. That is awesome. <laughs> you are right on. Thanks. Do we have Commissioner Rivlin? It looks like he's um, he's here, but he's not a panelist. Uh, Ryan, if you're there, can you promote Andrew Rivlin to a panelist? He's currently an attendee.
All right, there we go. This is Commissioner Rivlin. Can you hear me? We can. Loud, loud and clear. So I think we are all present apart from Chair Ostrowski. So um, I'm standing in for uh, Maggie tonight. So uh, you'll have to bear with me. This is the first time I've, uh, I've shared the Planning Commission meeting. So good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to call to order uh, the meeting of the Campbell Planning Commission, uh, June the 8th, 2021. Um, Corinne, could we stop, stop the call, please? Are you looking for a roll call? Yes, please. All right, my sound was off. Okay. Commissioner Bookbinder. Present. Commissioner Colville. Present. Commissioner Cray. Yeah. Commissioner Rivlin. Present. Commissioner Sinister. There. Acting Chair Ching. Yeah. And Chair Ostrowski is absent this evening. Correct. Thank you, uh, Corinne. Um, and I'll just make a note, this regular planning commission meeting will be conducted via telecommunication and is compliant with the provisions of the Brown Act and Executive Order N29-20 issued by the Governor. Um, and uh, just before we start proceedings, on behalf of the Planning Commission, we'd like to formally welcome our new uh, Campbell um, uh, Community Development Director, uh, Rob Eastwood. So uh, official, uh, official welcome, Rob. Uh, I know we, we met at the SARC a, a few minutes earlier, um, and uh, I think we're very much looking forward to, uh, to working with you. Thank you. I appreciate the warm welcome. And I know at the end of the agenda, there's a director's report and hopefully we can catch up a bit more at the end of the agenda. But again, happy to be here and happy to see you all. Okay. Looking forward to it. Okay, um, so moving on. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah, any, any alterations, changes? I believe I need to abstain. I was not available at the last meeting. Okay, Great. And do I have a motion I'll, for uh, approval? Yeah, I'll move no. approval of our last, uh, of our May 11th uh, Planning Commission meetings. Second? I'll second that. Oh. I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, Adam. And could we have a, a voice vote, please, Corinne? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you... Yes. Could you have a uh, could we have a voice vote, please? Yeah. Commissioner Bookbinder. Aye. Commissioner Colville. I abstain. Commissioner Cray. Uh, aye. Commissioner Zisser. Aye. And acting uh, chair. Aye. You you did forget me, but I, I abstain as I mentioned a few moments ago. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, Director Eastwood, do we have any communications for the Commission? Or any agenda postponements, modifications? Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of any. I'll defer to the staff if they've seen any come in, but uh, not to my knowledge. Correct, we have nothing. Okay, okay thank you. Um, at this point in the meeting, uh, we are open it up to the public where any member of the public may address the commission on an item that is not on the agenda. You may speak up to five minutes, but the planning commission may not take any action. Um, would anybody like to speak on anything which is not in the agenda for tonight's meeting? Okay. Um, Seeing or hearing nobody, I'll move on to uh, the agenda. Uh, before we start the agenda, um, any other commissioners, do we have any disclosures regarding the agenda tonight? Okay, with that, we'll go on to the agenda. We have three items. Um, the first one 
is a city initiated public hearing to consider the City of Campbell 2022 to 2026 capital improvement plan for citywide projects for consistency with the Campbell general plan. Staff is recommending that the project be deemed exempt under CEQA. Uh, tentative city council meeting date, June the 15th, 21. Um, I don't actually have a planner listed next to this. Um, I don't know whether that's you, Daniel. You're volunteering. <laughs> um, that, that is me. I'll say a few opening words and then hand it to Daniel. So I know this uh, comes to the commission every year. It's uh, typical in every jurisdiction. You have to review the capital improvement plan to be consistent with the general plan. Uh, I did want to acknowledge we do have as a resource, if you have any questions on factual uh, information or projects listed in uh, the capital improvement plan. We have the uh, chief of police here. Uh, we do have the city engineer here. We have uh, uh, Will Fuentes from uh, finance here. Again, they're here as a resource. Uh, you know, the focus is just on conformance with the general plan, but one to recognize uh, they're in attendance as a resource. And with that, uh, I'll hand it to Daniel. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, so that's really the uh, the extent of the planning commission's purview is to simply identify conformance with the general plan. I do have a slide that I'll pull up if that will facilitate the discussion. Uh, generally, this is done by the city's planning agency. Uh, the city's past practice is to forward this to the planning commission for your consideration. So let me pull up that slide. Okay, so here we have the new CIP items and requests for additional appropriations, as noted in the staff report, just for expediency, uh, since the previous CIP items had already been found in conformance with the general plan. Uh, the staff report generally only focuses on new capital projects and additional appropriations. Uh, with that, uh, the staff will take any questions the commission may have. I have a couple, if it's uh, okay to have me get started. Um, so for uh, program uh, project 19MM, what does the traffic calming program consist of? Like where have we been calming traffic? Where do we plan to calm traffic and how is that decided? Uh, Amy, are you? Yes, I, I'm here, I'm here. I'm um, Amy Olay, city engineer. I can answer the question on traffic calming, hello. Um, we have started this program a few years ago, and um, there have been a few locations where we have been able to install some traffic calming devices, and they include speed humps. Um, so we've had recently, we've done them on Richley, um, Campbell Avenue. We did some other amenities on Christopher. And so what happens is that the neighborhood, if they find that there's a need for traffic calming, they then get, get their neighbors together, then they um, have to submit a petition to the city, right? And then there's a whole process that we have in place. And um, as part of this new funding, we then hope to continue that program. Um, so we do have a list of streets that where we have received interest but it really is then up to the neighborhood to follow through on getting the petitions. So that requires a 50% um, initial signatures from the neighbors on that street. And then from there, we do um, what we call like, you know, some studies, we gather data. And then from there, we do additional surveys before we do an installation. Thank you, that sounds very exciting. I hope I'm, I'm very, very happy to hear about that. Um, on, I, I only have notes on uh, four of these, so uh, don't worry, it won't be that many. Uh, for, I just wanna say for project 23 JJ, which is the um, extending uh, trail along the west side of the Pruneyard area, the city can um, manage it. Uh, what happens if Caltrans turns us down? It says, if uh, we'll do that if Caltrans is okay with it. I, I believe it was originally the developer was going to do that. Cal, they could not manage to negotiate with Caltrans. So they just handed the money to the state. Uh, sorry, handed the money to the city, and the city's going to try and do that. But what if Caltrans does not want to play ball with us? 
Yeah, we're really hoping that they do want to play ball with us, right? Because we see this as an important extension. Um, but if they don't, the way we have written the agreement with the Pruneyard is that we can use that money towards other bike and pedestrian improvements in the vicinity. Ah, thank you, that, that sounds sensible. Uh, let's see. Um, I just want to say Project 23JJ, the um, parking guidance system downtown. I'm very, very excited about that, and hopefully that'll give us an idea of how much parking we actually need um, and how utilized our garages are. Uh, lastly, uh, Project 24CC, the expansion of the off-ramp um, for southbound 17 at Hamilton. Um, is that expected to... Um, I guess, was this plan before SB 743? Is this expected to improve congestion even given induced demand or will this just add more traffic? Um, I, I have general concerns about any kind of um, highway expansion, kind of close to a highway expansion. So for this project, it's been identified that there is a need to signalize the intersection as you come off the off-ramp. Um, of 17 with um, White Oaks. But what we need to do is we need to interconnect that signal with the existing signal at Camden. Oh, uh, pardon me, I'm sorry, that's that's uh, project 26JJ. I'm talking about 24CC, oh, the one at the, um, no worries, there, there's two projects that are about 17. That's 17 northbound at Camden, this is 17 southbound at Hamilton. Oh, at Hamilton. It's, uh, it's adding an extra lane to the, uh, the off-ramp. Yeah, so that has been identified as one where we need to um, we need to upgrade, upsize the off ramp at 17 in Hamilton, and we have um, collected some developer contributions already. This project has been in the books for a few years. We're just trying to pull the money together. It's a measure be funded project. Okay, uh, just out of curiosity, like when you say it's been identified as a need, how was it identified? It's through the Measure B program and the highways. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this this is sort of the the county. Uh, correct. Existence. Correct. That the uh, the county Measure B program. Okay. The VBTA. Um, those are all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for for explaining that. Yep. You're welcome. I I've got a couple quick ones. Uh, just in terms of what the planning commission's purview today, in terms of the gen, you know general plan, I really don't have any problems. But it sounds like we have a little leeway, so let me just ask a couple of very quick questions. One to follow up on one of Adam's questions: the parking guidance system, two hundred thirty thousand. We say it's it's uh, funded with private funds. What 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 does that mean? Where do, what are the private funds? Where does the funding come from? At the moment, it's funded through the OPA development, and um, there's a deficient number of parking spaces, right? So through that project, it's been identified that, um, I don't remember exactly the count, I think it's about roughly 30 parking spaces at the moment. So there is a, um, a mitigation fee for that. And at the, at the time, I think right now, we're looking at $6,000 per parking space. And that was really based on $2017. Okay, I, I didn't quite catch you, Amy. So there were some projects that didn't have enough parking and they, they put some money into a fee? Yeah, this is, okay. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. from the OPA development in okay, downtown. I got, mm -hmm. oh, I got you. And just one other question, just for the heck of it, I'll throw it out here because it just caught my eye because I know we got the new police uh, headquarters being built or very soon being built, hopefully. But I noticed that the uh, furniture fixtures and equipment is uh, budgeted at like 2.8 million, but it says unfunded. I know there are various unfunded projects, but is that is that a worry that the FFE for the new police headquarters is unfunded at this point? Well, I'm wondering if our finance director can weigh on that and on that. Will, are you here? I'm sure. Uh, um, so, um, so, 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 right now, um, we've, um, we've not, we've not yet, um, I did, I did, uh, we've not yet, um, I did, uh, I'm fine. 
um, yet um, how to uh, pay for, how to pay for the F F and E. Um, although we 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 are we are uh, we we are uh, we are also a, a talking a talking to the uh, state and um, they um they um they may they may be they may be able um to uh, to 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 uh, to to a um a grant um to uh, pay for the ff the ff the ff and uh, e um if we uh, can't get a, a if we if we if we can't get a grant from the state um then we 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 could we could uh, take the amount of from our a uh, 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 general fund um but it would be it would be preferred um if we can um to uh, get a, a grant um that would come from the that would that would come from the uh, state. Um, we we should we should know for sure. Um, I say the uh, the uh, the uh, end of June. Um, but um, I I I I do th I do think um, that we we will be we will be able to 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 pay for. Uh, the uh, the uh, expense. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's good. I, I, it sounds like it's still kind of an issue, and I know that we're getting kind of close there, but it seems like it was still a year or two out. So. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's been, uh, two years out still. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a question. Um, it's my understanding that, uh, that we're not uh, supposed to comment uh, on our support or non-support for specific items, but um, uh, I, I did want to find out about, um, and, I, and I'd like a confirmation that that's what, uh, what's, what, uh, what we're doing here is, is basically, you know, supporting, uh, determining whether this is in line with the general plan. Um, but there is a, there, uh, what I wanted to find out is that there is one issue, um, there is one item, the um, armored rescue vehicle, as it's called, and um, what I wanted to find out is if there is any detailed um, information on, the, on, support, uh, on supporting the purchase of that, that the, the department has put together beyond what is in the um, the CIP, uh, uh, specifically any any historical data, anything on past incidents um, that would uh, uh, support further support the purchase of that. Whether or not we can have get access of that to that information. Yeah, I can answer that that question. Um, over the last year, we've really put a big emphasis on. Um, reaching out to our community to get input and feedback on this request. And over the last year, we have um, we created a video that, that answers a lot of the questions you're talking about historically, what we've had, why we need it, uh, the types of calls we're using it for. We've put information on Nextdoor and on um, our webpage. We also had an in-person event where we borrowed um, Santa Clara Police Department's armored vehicle and uh, allowed residents to come take a look at it, see it, see it firsthand, um, and uh, had plenty of conversations over the last year um, talking about uh, the value of it and, and why it's still a request of ours. 
Uh, okay, I, I just I, I did look at your site and I didn't see uh, much on it. So uh, I'm, I'm wondering if somebody can um, forward uh, any 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 information or links that uh, uh, that cover what you you've uh, talked about, Chief, uh, uh, um, uh, beyond what's in the uh, what's beyond what's in the CIP. I, I can get some of the links sent over to you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and just so you know, Commissioner, uh, sister, it's not the first time that was brought up. I don't think you were with us yet, but uh, there, there was a big meeting maybe half a year ago where uh, there was a lot of uh, concern and talk and discussion as well. And there was a Denny's incident that you weren't uh, or maybe not privy to uh, regarding the, the Campbell Department having to borrow uh, a sister in a neighboring city's uh, rescued armor vehicle uh, to help uh, with the situation. And uh, uh, definitely not the first time you've brought it up. Uh, and good information. I'm glad you're asking questions. Chief Berg, yeah. thank you for joining us today. I always like it when uh, you guys sit in and, and join us. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just just in response to the Commissioner Colville's comments, actually, I am, I've done some research on this and, I, and I've, I've gone back to um, previous sessions um, and looked at the, um, uh, the council meetings and study sessions. And I'm familiar with um, the issues, uh, uh, and I've heard uh, uh, Chief Bird speak on this, and um, uh, so I, and I'm familiar with the Denny's incident. So, uh, so I, I do have some background history on it. So uh, I'm not totally unfamiliar with it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> any any more questions? I had a question regarding the Measure O item. I, let me pull it up on screen. I can give you the number. It uh, referred to uh, a fiscal year spend in 2025. Perhaps this is for the finance director. Uh, as I understood it, the library's construction would be done in 2024. What, maybe I'm misreading it. What were the funds in 2025 allocated for? And it also references related to that, that it's unfunded, but I, I was confused because I thought the funding came from the public. Perhaps I'm just misreading it. Um, so I'll, um, I'll let me, uh, let me uh, pull it up and pick here. Um, I'm not quite there, um, but I will. Okay. Um, but it, um, it, 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 it should pay for, it should pay for, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the design cost and 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 also the uh, uh, cost of uh, uh, the the cost of uh, construction um the the ff and and e cost of the how um a uh, uh, cannot a uh, cannot be paid uh, for from uh, the bond funds um, so uh, again, we 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 either uh, need to uh, uh, pay for the F F and E um, for uh, for uh, for um, from a grant um, that would that would come from the estate, or um, we would uh, again uh, uh, take the F F and the FF and E expense uh, from uh, the uh, from uh, the, uh, the general fund, um, but let me again. I'm uh, pulling it up now, so I'm sorry. I'm just it was on uh, budget book uh, page five twenty two is what I was reading. If you're looking at the same document, which was page fifty eight in our packet, uh, okay. I think I start to understand the funding um, shortage or not shortage, but unfunded element. And then uh, my, yeah, I guess you sort of answered it by saying it pays for the construction costs. Perhaps it's, I guess the library ends in 2024. Perhaps it's some extended police construction. Yeah, so um, it's, to, it's, to, it's, to, it's to pay for the up, up. It's to, it's to, it's to, it's to pay for uh, and um to uh, uh, complete um the uh to complete the uh 
the place as a station. Um, so I um, it um, I think it it goes into the it, it, into a, 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 into a, a, a summer. Um, but right uh, right now, um, it's a it's a it's a a kind of date, um, and it um, it 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 could change. Okay, also. thank you. That that provides enough clarity. I appreciate that. Thing. Thank you. A any any further questions, staff? Um, I, I had a question, a clarification question. Um, it goes back to uh, Commissioner Ziss's subject, which is the armored rescue vehicle. Um, I believe in last year's CIP, that was listed at $250,000. And this year it's 313,000. I, I wondered what the reason for the, the change over, over one year. I think uh, I saw Nort log on there. He may be able to explain the the number differences for you. No problem. Um, typically, our, our CIP covers a five year period, and in last year's CIP budget, it covered the period of fiscal year twenty one through fiscal year twenty five. So it only captured the first four payments for the armored rescue vehicle, and this year just happens to cover the full five year for the total amount of three hundred twelve thousand dollars. And um, it has a useful life um, of 15 years, I noted. Um, we, we talked with the manufacturer and it's uh, closer to 20 to 25 years. Right, okay. Um, and the loaded cost, what would be the, because I, I what would be the cost on um, the annual running cost of this roughly? I'm trying to gauge the, the the cost over over the life. So the we estimated it out that it's going to be about twelve thousand dollars per year for the life of the vehicle, and mm -hmm. the ongoing maintenance cost would be similar to any uh, normal vehicle. I mean, it's based on a, a Ford F five fifty frame, so normal um, oil changes and um, preventative maintenance as such. This vehicle wouldn't be driven on a daily basis. It would only be driven uh, in very specific circumstances. So the mileage would, would be very low. So I think uh, very minimal <clears throat> upkeep on, on expenses. So that'd be approximately about 15K a year for, for the running expense on it? Uh, probably 15 on the high end, yeah. Right, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, if there's no more questions, um, I'll open the public hearing. Um, if any members of the public would like to uh, talk on this item for uh, up to two minutes. Nope, seeing or hearing nobody, um, I'll close the public hearing and open it up to the commissioners for discussion. Um, who would like to leave, uh, lead with this item? I, I, you know, I guess I just say, I, I, I really does look like everything, including the armored rescue vehicle, which I know is very controversial in the, in the community, but it sure looks like everything uh, all the capital improvement projects are uh, consistent with the Campbell general plan. So I didn't have any problems with, with, with those. Okay. Any other comment? Uh, I, I think I said everything I wanted to say in the asking ask questions uh, portion. I am, uh, I recognize that the on rescue vehicles been a controversial thing in the community. I feel like it's outside of our purview on the planning commission. And uh, I am excited about some of the things we have going forward, especially the, uh, the parking management in, uh, in downtown. 
I guess I have a question here for, for Daniel. Um, probably should have asked, <laughs> asked this uh, uh, earlier. Um, our, our purview and remit for this particular meeting is to review just the new projects, not the existing ones. Is that correct? Now, I mean, technically, you do review the entirety of the CIP, but for expediency, we do focus on the new projects and additional appropriations. Right. But if you do want to comment on a, on a project that has been previously considered, you may do so. Okay. Um, is there any, are there any other comments from, from the uh, commissioners here? I'm uh, happy to make a motion if we're ready. Um, before you do that, uh, Commissioner sure. Cray, I, I, have, I have one on the existing one, and this is type of, uh, I expressed concern, in fact, voted against the um, CIP last year based on the Project 22CC, which is the armoured um, rescue vehicle. Um, you know, I will say a few words on this. You know, this is um, checking... Our, our remit is to check consistency <clears throat> with the general plan. Um, I, I guess maybe I'm just reiterating what I said before. I don't find it consistent um, with policy HS 2.1, where it's meeting assistance needs and ensuring a safe, secure environment. Um, so just really for the record, whilst I, I understand and agree with the need to protect the officers and have the ability to have that resource available to the community and to Campbell. Um, I'm not in favor of um, Campbell purchasing it. Um, the rationale in my mind is that while this is uh, something that can help de-escalate incidents, it can also uh, work the other way and has been shown to prove the other way, especially with minority groups. Um, so I'm very concerned about that aspect of it. Um, I'm also concerned that if we actually purchase a vehicle, uh, we have a third of a million dollars um, of an of a armoured rescue vehicle. And actually, the best outcome for that vehicle is it for it to be never used. Right? <laughs> that would be a great outcome, uh, that it's never actually used. The problem with that is somebody's going to turn around and say, why have we just bought a third of a million dollars worth of vehicle that costs us $15,000 a year or whatever to maintain? And I think there will be pressure um, to demonstrate use. And what would worry me there, it may be used in circumstances where it's not appropriate because there might be pressure to actually show its use as opposed to, okay, we can get that resource from another agency or from uh, another city. Um, my other objection concern is um, many of the issues and challenges that we see both in Campbell and in the surrounding areas are related to um, things which I can't see how a vehicle uh, like this will help. Um, people suffering from mental illness, um, drug abuse, uh, you know, just, just as, a, as a note, you know, I, I cycled down the Los Gales Creek Trail with my son uh, at the weekend towards San Jose, to be fair, but not drawing borders, had three incidents there, um, two involving, um, one I would say is a drug uh, person with drug issues, one with mental issues. Um, both those people uh, had, you know, were at risk. Um, and the other one was somebody driving like a madman um, through the center of San Jose with two blown tires. And that was, that car was later um, uh, in one of the streets which we parked. My point with this is that that funding could be used uh, in other ways to maybe mitigate some of the things we more often see in this city. Um, and uh, I, I think I'd also end with um, the general comment on the militarization um, of the police, which is the general theme and how this relates to HS 2.1 is personally, that doesn't make me feel safe nor secure in what I'm seeing. So that's my own personal view, but I do think it relates to um, 
policy HS 2.1, and I think it is within our purview. And I'm re restating that um, for the record. Um, so with that, if there's no other comments, I'll ask for- well, um, I'd like to then yeah. make a comment because um, when I first read the, um, I, I suspect the chief wants to say something too, but um, when I first read our um, agenda tonight, I was, uh, being the guy that's really new, I haven't done this before, that uh, when I first read it, I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, and re I realized that in theory, we're not supposed to uh, comment on uh, the, the appropriations. And uh, before I, I, I came, I had prepared a fair amount of information that um, parallels uh, Commissioner uh, Ching's um, comments. Um, uh, which I, I intend to actually forward to the council anyway, but, but I just want to uh, reinforce, uh, and, and since I'm not familiar with the, uh, the subtleties of whether or not, um, uh, you know, a capital equipment expenditure could or could not uh, support the general plan, that's, that was an, uh, an issue in my head myself, and uh, the commissioner has expressed uh, it uh, Pretty much identically to what I would, I would say, uh, whether or not that's uh, that's uh, true or, ju or justifiable, um, I don't know. But um, I just like to uh, reinforce that I'm I'm in the same place with this. Uh, I I I've, I've, I've not have a I'm not uh, uh, in favor of this kind of expenditure, and that I'd like to get that on the record as well. For, uh, for pretty much the same reasons, so. Yeah, he's trying not to, uh, I, I think he's trying to relate it to the consistency with the general plan. You know, whether my comments are consistent, <laughs> are relevant or rational, I'll let people judge, right? I feel it is, like, I guess I can express that view in, in this, in this, in this um, uh, on this commission. Vice Chair, um, if I could uh, have a moment to, to respond, that's possible. Please. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely understand uh, your concerns. Um, I, I actually went back and rewatched last year's meeting um, to, to, uh, to hear those and, uh, and reflect on what was said last year, what's the discussions that have been going on this whole year and, and kind of where we are. Um, I, I, won't, I won't respond to everything. I think we're, the focus of tonight is really that consistency and I think there's two things in our request. One, the improved feeling of safety, which I understand that, that this, this purchase doesn't make you feel safer, and also an effective emergency preparedness program. Um, you bring up a lot of, of different uh, issues, global, national issues, and I think it's important to look at the track record of the Campbell Police Department. There's a lot going on in, in the world around us, but uh, Right now we're focused on Campbell and this is a Campbell request. And we had an actual military vehicle for about 20 years that we acquired from the military, from the Department of Defense that we returned in 2019. And I think the track record on its use speaks for itself. It was, it was not misused, it was used uh, appropriately and sparingly and in the best interest of public safety. And, um, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, we also distributed a, a draft policy for the use of this proposed vehicle that's on our website. So I think it's somewhat unfair to, uh, to link the misuse and uh, a national dialogue of what's going on in other states around this country and uh, put that on our, on our plate and uh, basically come to the conclusion that we are going to um, not use it appropriately, even though I feel very strongly that, that our track record has proven that we utilize resources like this appropriately and in the best interest of Campbell. Um, but really getting back to, to the goals and objectives of the general plan, uh, uh, what, I'll, what the comparison that I'd like to throw out there because it's on the CIP uh, coming up in the next few years is um, a replacement of our handgun pol uh, handguns. That, that'll be before you, I think in two or three years. Um, but it's one of those things where there's a lot of people um, in this community who don't like guns, who see a gun and feel unsafe. 
just like I think you're saying you see a vehicle like this and it doesn't make you feel safer or you see officers, what happened last week running into an active shooter event uh, and, and those situations don't make people feel safer. But I, what I would like for you to feel safe is knowing that the Campbell Police Department is appropriately trained and equipped to deal with any emergency critical incident that comes our way. So I would, uh, I would ask you to, not asking you to change your mind, but ask you to change your perspective that it's not the, the look of the vehicle, whether that makes you feel safe, but knowing that the police department, your police department is able to respond to a critical incident um, in a timely manner in order to resolve it safely for our community. And last year we had another incident where we were relying on a um, armored vehicle from a neighboring jurisdiction where um, somebody had been shot nine times and that vehicle didn't arrive until an hour later after our officers had already uh, conducted a, a rescue, um, putting putting their lives in, in, in danger. So um, I think it's been proven even of the, the opponents of this have acknowledged that there is a need for this type of vehicle, whether or not they want uh, Campbell to uh, own their own, I guess is up for debate, but at the, at the at the core of this is whether or not we're prepared to handle emergency situations in a timely manner. And I feel very strongly that uh, without this piece of equipment, that it puts our community in, uh, in, in more danger based on our, our need to rely on our partners. Um, and it's already shown within the last year that it hasn't been able to arrive on time, so. Thank, Thank you, Chief Berg, for your, your comments there. You know, I, I don't think I'm arguing that we don't need a resource. I'm arguing whether Campbell needs to own that resource because, you know, it, it's a balance of risk, right? If we really want to be safe, we have a police officer on every corner. Um, so, so you have to have to balance balance that. And if that resource is being spent on this, it's not being spent on something else. Um, and I, I, you know, I think the police have been challenged with many things that they're probably not really in their remit, right? A lot of the things the police have to do is because probably there's other agencies that don't have the resource and you're, you're having to, to look after instances which probably aren't really within the, the police, um, you know, what the police are intended to do. Um, you know, I think Campbell's a great city. I, I hate to, I'm sure you view the police as a police service. Um, I, I, I'm just worried that the perception and the optics in some respect might change Campbell um, and it turns to be more of a police force. And I know that's not your intent, not, not the action, but I think a lot of the optics will be seen that when a, a small town like uh, Campbell with 40,000, 45,000 people, um, if, if we went ahead with this purchase. But anyway, go, going, off, going off base there and appreciate your, your feedback. If I could just comments. One, one piece of clarification, that mm. thousand number, that's not above and beyond the $300,000 purchase price. That's the cost of the vehicle over the life of the vehicle, twelve dollars to $15,000 a year. So there's not an additional cost on top of that. It's not. Yeah, it's, $15, yeah the, the $15,000 is the annual, annual running cost. Yeah. Uh, I had one uh, follow-up question. Uh, uh, Chief Berg, you mentioned a, uh, a proposed policy for the use of the vehicle, which sounds like an excellent idea. Is that was that published anywhere, or is that up on the website? Or I just tried to have a look for that, and I didn't see it anywhere. Obvious. So if you go to the police department's website, and it's under the capital improvement project requests in the about us under capital improvement project requests. Both of our uh, thank you. are in there, and then at the bottom of the rescue vehicle, there's a link to the cap policy. I, uh, I see it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other comments from the commissioners? I'll just chime in just really quickly to say that I do remember in our discussion from a year ago when I, Commissioner Ching spoke really very eloquently, Commissioner Zisser, those are really good points. I, I have, uh, like Commissioner Zisser, I did some research on this too over over the months, et cetera. I have seen the police uh, 
video, I, I guess I might disagree with one thing that uh, Chief Byrd just said about, you know, not saying not putting on Campbell what's going on nationally, but I think every every police force in every city has to, you know, grapple with those issues, obviously, and, and you know, all politics is local, right? So, uh, and I think, you know, just to paraphrase Commissioner Ching, in, in a nutshell, he's asking a, really a very good question is, is it really overkill? to have this thing, uh, this uh, armored rescue vehicle. And, you know, it's, it's a damn good question. It's, really, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. Uh, I think the police department though did make pretty good arguments, which I, you know, I can't get into here. It would take us forever. We don't want to get into a real long one on it, but uh, you know, and in terms of the general plan, I, you know, it certainly helps and you know, helps our preparedness, our response to emergencies. Is it too much? I, you know, we got 20, 25 year life. We're we're a small city, but we're in the middle of a, you know one of the major urban areas of the of the world, really. So I guess that's kind of where I would, would come down to it. Uh, I wouldn't doubt since it's not in this year's uh, funding that it still comes up with city council's got to give the final approval at some point, and community might weigh in again on this thing. But uh, I think those are all really really good points. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cray. Um, do I have a proposal for motion here? Yeah, I will, uh, I'll just move that the uh, Planning Commission adopt the resolution finding the proposed capital improvement plan is consistent with the Campbell general plan. Sorry, who was speaking? That was Commissioner Cray. I'll second the motion. Binder. Aye. Oh, are we voting? Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear who the second person was. That was Commissioner Mr. Reverend. Second. Who was that? Is this sir? Uh, uh, Commissioner Rivlin seconded it. I need to do that for the minutes. Thank you, guys. Okay, I'll do the roll call. Commissioner Bookbinder. Aye. Cool. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Yes, sir. I'm going to abstain. Acting Chair Ching. Chair Ching? No. Okay. You get that, Corinne? Uh, six. So I have a one no, one abstain, and one absent. So yeah, I do have a four, one, one, one. In favor. That's total. So I have uh, our ch our chair is absent. Okay. That sounds right. So that passes on majority vote. Thank you. I'll move on to item two. So PLN 20-21-63, public hearing to consider the application of PLN-2021-63 of Greg Benton for a site and architectural review permit to allow a reduced second story side yard setback for an approximately 850 square foot addition to an existing single family residence on property located at 1204 Monica Lane. Staff is recommending that this item be deemed categorically exempt on CEQA. Uh, Planning Commission action is final unless appealed in writing to the City Club within 10 days. Uh, project planner, senior planner, Daniel Farmer. Thank you. Let me uh, load up this PowerPoint. So we do have an application for a site and architecture review permit for 1204 Monica Lane. Uh, this is a 6,000 square foot single family residential property located on Monica south of Westfield Avenue, uh, just near the San Jose city border, uh, located within the R16 zoning district and outside of any area or neighborhood plan. The proposal would add a 850 square foot uh, second story addition above the existing garage as shown here. Uh, maintaining the existing five foot 10 inch setback of the ground floor. Uh, with regard to the architectural design, the addition would largely maintain the ranch style appearance of the home, uh, balancing the 
the bulk of massing between the ground and second floor and largely comply with the city's design guidelines for additions to single family homes. Uh, additions in this area are not generally subject to site architecture review by the Planning Commission. Uh, normally, uh, such additions are reviewed uh, by staff as a ministerial building permit review just for strict conformance with the numeric standards such as floor area ratio and height. However, the, the zoning code does provide a mechanism for an applicant to request a reduced uh, side setback for a second story addition outside of a variance process. In order to approve that request, the planning commission must make two specific findings that are identified at the top of the screen. Uh, largely, these findings have been interpreted by the planning commission in the past as a measure to ensure that the addition does not overly impact the neighboring property, by casting shadows, blocking views, uh, creating privacy intrusions. But as discussed in further detail in the staff report and as shown here with the applicant's privacy plan and a photograph of the two homes with the neighboring property, uh, the relationship is um, rather favorable for the applicant in that the neighboring property has a solid wall and the addition would effectively look at the wall and door down to the neighbor's garage, uh, precluding uh, any typical privacy impact that you would see where you would have a second story home that had multiple windows along that adjacent sidewall. Uh, therefore, staff does believe that the Planning Commission can affirmatively find the necessary findings for approval and does recommend that the commission adopt a resolution approving the site and architectural review permit. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, any questions for, for Daniel? Uh, I have a question about uh, the, the next door neighbor's uh, setback. Is the next door neighbor setback the standard setback? Uh, does not appear to be so. That wall is a straight vertical two-story wall. So you think it's below the minimum there too as well? We would have to double check the existing setback, but typically in order for a two-story home to satisfy the setback, the second story is typically offset from the ground floor, which does not appear to be the case with the neighboring property. Um, just real quick, did we skip the SARC report? I believe that comes after staff presentation. Ah, that's why I was, sorry about that. I just have a couple of quick questions, Daniel. Uh, oh, just because I can't tell from the but the uh, the house so the house on twelve oh four Monica will that have any windows on the side facing the uh, the neighbor? Yeah, let me double check. Let me pull up those plans. I couldn't tell. And it looks like there will be a couple of small windows. I, I guess because I, I was just imagining that the house with the second story now next door maybe didn't didn't put any windows on its side to protect the privacy of their neighbor there. So I'm just trying to get it uh, apples and apples. But my, uh, my other question for you, because I've never seen it in a report this way, and I thought that was a good way to do it. And, and, and the second story looks fine to me, but uh, you mentioned that the second story is 43% as large as the first story. And I, know that I, I can't remember seeing a percentage like that in any of our past reports. It seems like a good way to kind of look at these things. Uh, I'm sure we don't have a standard for percentage of the second story versus the first story. That's ideal, but uh, what's, the, what's the general guidelines uh, there? Is just 40%? That was that was a numeric benchmark, but you're right. We don't really have a standard or really um, a full analysis that would be able to be used to cross compare applications. If I recall, we had used this type of analysis in the long ago past, uh, dealing with a particularly large home as a means to balance out the square footage between the first and second floor, but you're correct. It's not a typical uh, practice. But the 43% is a pretty good, it's just a good percentage, I guess. Huh? Something that, that well, to way. the extent that, in, as noted in, this arc, in the, the staff report, the guidelines do have an illustration. Effectively, you don't want that second story to be too large or too small 
And so in that regard, 40% kind of feels somewhere in that middle point. Okay, all right, not to belabor. I like I liked the illustration, it did help. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just know another question has has the city received either positively or negatively anything from the neighbor regarding this uh, reduced setback? Uh, no, no correspondence was received. So I believe the applicants did reach out to their neighbor. There's no more questions. It's my bad. I should have done the uh, SARC report after Daniel's presentation. So this came up a couple of weeks ago um, for, uh, at SARC. Um, we were supportive of it. Uh, I think the main things were occurring to us was, was this going to cause a privacy issue? Um, doesn't it doesn't seem to be. Um, and uh, was it generally in keeping? And was the proportions and massing um, an issue? So it looked like a nice design, in keeping with the area. Uh, and not a not a privacy issue. So Sark was supportive of this um, this application. Um, if there's no further speakers, um, I'll open it up to the public hearing. Um, and uh, would the applicant like to speak? You don't need to, but you're more than welcome um, to to say anything. Yes. Hi. Um... I don't have anything in particular to add. I, I've read through the report and I've read through all the conditions of approval and they all seem very appropriate for this project. And we want to see and be good neighbors as much as they want us to be. So I think um, one, one thing I will, I guess add about the window question is that on the south side there where we're next to the two story house, uh, the only second story window is actually in a hallway and it purposely is raised up. The sill of that window is raised up high it's to be more of a decorative window. It's not a window for view. And it's just some to let some light into a hallway. And so we've kept the window situation to that. Uh, the only other new windows are on the first floor for, for a, a living room. And we've kept those very reasonable too, just because we want to be able to have furniture in the room as well. Um, I don't have any anything further to add. Thank you. Any other public comment? Not seeing or, or hearing anything, I'll close the public hearing and turn it over to uh, the commissioners. Who would like to lead with this one? I can start out. Um, I don't have much to add. We looked at this at SARC. Uh, it looked good to me then. It looks good to me now. I'm, uh, any of the, concern, the concerns were basically about, um, is it oddly shaped? No, it's not. Are the privacy impacts? No, it looks onto a blank wall. Um, I have that. I'm fine with this. Yeah, I just say uh, real briefly. Um, I, I drove by the other day to just take a look at the streets. I, I haven't actually been up in that neighborhood myself, and and uh, the design looks fine and certainly is consistent with the neighborhood. There's a a, 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 a mix of single story and two story homes. Uh, uh, it's it's a very lovely street and uh, looks like the design to me is uh, uh, works well in that neighborhood. So. Uh, I'm, I'm good with it. Further comments or do, uh, would someone like to propose a motion? I, I would just say I thought it looked good too and really didn't have any problems. I think the privacy issue was the biggie and there doesn't seem to be one and the design looks fine. So. I, I guess I can move that we adopt the, the planning, Campbell Planning Commission adopt the resolution, reference attachment one, approving a site and architectural review permit to allow a reduced second story side yard setback for an approximately 850 square foot addition to an existing single family residence at 1204. That's the right address. Yeah, 1204, Monica Lane. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, Corinne, do you want to do a roll call? 
Commissioner Buckbinder? Aye. Commissioner Colville? Aye. Commissioner Cray? Aye. Commissioner Ridland? Aye. Commissioner Zisser? Aye. Chair Ching? Aye. It's a 601. Thank you. And um, Planning Commission action is final unless appealed in writing to the City Clerk within 10 calendar days. Thank you and good luck with the uh, your uh, remodel. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the final item, uh, public hearing to consider the application PLN-2021-57 of Kimberly McCarty for a conditional use permit to allow establishment of a dog training facility, South Bay Dog Training within the existing tenant space on property located at 186 East Sunny Oaks Avenue, Suite C. Staff is recommending this item be deemed categorically exempt under CEQA. Um, it's, uh, project planner, uh, assistant planner, Naz Healy. So please, Naz. Thank you, good evening. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, can everyone hear me and see my screen? Yes. Okay, great, yeah. thank you. Okay, so as mentioned, item three is an application for a conditional use permit to establish a dog training facility at 186 East Sunny Oaks, Suite C. So the project site is an existing commercial and industrial development located between Winchester Boulevard here and Santa Mas Expressway over here. Um, and this is in the M1 Light Industrial Zoning District. And the dog training facility would be located in the front commercial building that's located along Sunny Oaks. So the proposal is for a conditional use permit to establish the dog training facility, which would be within a 1,200 square foot tenant space. Uh, and this would be within an existing building. The business hours um, are proposed uh, between 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily with staff hours an additional one to two hours before and after to allow for setup and cleanup. Um, and those are the requested hours and maybe the likely hours, but staff recommends allowing 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., um, which would be consistent with the standard commercial hours just to allow for future flexibility. There would be 15 minutes between the end of one training session and the start of the next, and this would minimize the number of people and dogs on site at any one time. Um, and the uh, proposal would allow up to six dogs at any time within a, a training session. So here we have the floor plan and all activities will occur inside the building um, where there will be two training areas and then a uh, potty yard. Um, and then the applicant provided and it's included in the attachments, a sanitation and waste management plan. So with that, staff recommends that the planning commission <coughs> approving a conditional use permit. Thank you. Thank you, Naz. And I don't believe there's any SARC report for this because there's no modifications to the building. Yes, it did not go to a SARC meeting. Um, any, any questions to, uh, to Naz? No. If there's no questions, I'll open it up to um, the public hearing. Um, would the uh, applicant like to say, uh, say anything? I would. Hi, I'm Kimberly McCarty. And I just wanted to be here and say thank you guys for considering our application. My business partner, Natalie and I, um, there's Natalie. Um, we've been in the dog training industry for over 15 years. We have a lot of experience handling dogs and we are really super um, excited to have the 
potential opportunity to work in uh, the community of Campbell. So thank you so much for considering us. And um, if you do have further questions for me, I'm available to answer them. Thank you. Any any questions for Kimberly from the team? Hey, I just have one question, uh, Kimberly, as long as you're here, which uh, thank you. And I, I'm a dog person, so I'm already biased, you know, but uh, <laughs> I just the, uh, it's, it's, I like the way it's put indoor area containment system for dogs. Uh, I know that, that that property is actually relatively small and there's that one little green strip in front, which is where, you know, the dogs will exit their cars and probably be going. Uh, but I, I guess, can you explain what what is that? That's inside your facility? There's a green area with that for dogs? Yeah, we will be constructing a, we call it the potty yard, and it will have a um, green space um, as well as a, a multiple tier tray system for, um, for full sanitation. And I guess you want to encourage the, the, the dog owners to bring the dog straight inside instead of no, we're, we will be discouraging uh, elimination inside, um, but we want the possibility for them to eliminate inside in the proper area. Um, most of the dogs that we will be handling will be um, with their guardians. And so we always encourage them to toilet their dogs before entering the building. Um, classes are very short to 50 minutes long. So most dogs can hold it that long. <laughs> But we do want to have an opportunity for them to eliminate if they do need to. Thank you. Uh, can I ask, uh, would you anticipate, um, I mean, I, it's, it's this um, parking lots in front of the, whatever, there's five or six um, businesses there, and then the curb. And uh, would you anticipate and would you see that as a problem as if dogs are going to go before they come in and any mess that's going to be, uh, th there isn't any natural place since it's basically a parking lot, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, in front of the building. So it seems to me we'd want to discourage, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure that the other businesses would be pleased with dogs um, doing their business um, out in front of the uh, uh, I'm front of the building. Yeah, good question. So there is a green space, actually. There's a strip of grass um, right at the curbside. Um, I don't know if you can tell that from the plants, but there is a, a grass space. But in addition, um, we will be putting out a elimination bin in front of our building um, so that if there is any potty accidents out front, it is disposed of immediately. And if the owners don't do it, we will be doing it ourselves. Thanks for clarifying that. Any other questions? Okay, open it up. And any uh, any um, feedback, comments from uh, the public? Okay, seeing. Uh, hearing or seeing nobody, um, I'll close the public hearing and hand it over to the commission. Like um, I with? think I, I may have missed, uh, I, I probably should have asked, asked this before, but I, I noticed that the applicant asked for uh, somewhat more restricted hours than staff recommended. Um, is the measure or is the a resolution uh, that we have drafted uh, using the staff's recommended hours? Yes. Um, so, I mean, they don't need to operate between those times, but that would allow them to, if, you know, in the future, they want to make any adjustments to their business. Um, they wouldn't have to come back for a modification just for something very minor, like uh, just adjusting the hours. That sounds cool. That answers my question. Thank you. So I, I do have another. I do have a question for uh, for staff, but it's obviously not in in the. But uh, I did notice when I went by there that there's actually an eating establishment. In it was one of the businesses is a little deli place, and 
I'm I'm assuming since there's no mention of it that there's no restrictions with regards to having a, a dog training facility in the same or near um, an eating establishment. Not that I'm aware of, and I mean, I have a dog, and you know, I bring her to restaurants sometimes, right, right. outdoor area, and. Um, yeah, I know yeah. it sounds like a silly question, but I, it's different than uh, it's people being, you know, yeah. But um, I just wanted to ask if there was any anything in our policies that would uh, be a problem with that. And I, I don't personally see a problem, but uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, in Indoors, there, I think, are restrictions from the health department on having dogs inside um, somewhere where there's food intended for people. But um, I'm not aware of any restrictions um, on having those uses located uh, nearby. Okay. Okay. Any uh, any other comment from the commissioners? No. Nope. If not, I I'll, I'll suggest since uh, Commissioner Cray is a dog person, um, <laughs> would you like to? Uh, uh, make a motion. If I'm not barking up the wrong tree, I'll, I'll try. Uh, uh, motion I'll might be the wrong expression in this. <laughs> Very rough meeting. Yeah. Uh, uh. I'll, I'll just move that the uh, Planning Commission adopt the resolution uh, reference attachment one again, approving a conditional use permit PLN 2021-57 to allow the establishment of a dog training facility, South Bay Dog Training at 186 East Sunny Oaks Avenue, Suite C. Thank you. Do we hear a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you. Uh, Corinne, do you want to do a, a roll call? Commissioners Bookbinder? Present. <laughs> Sorry. Aye. <laughs> Colville? Aye. Cray? Aye. Goodlin? Aye. This, sir? Aye. Chair Ching. Aye. Six zero one. So that uh, that passes. Um, the planning commission action is final unless the appeal is in writing to the city clerk within ten calendar days. Thank you and good luck with your uh, your new venture. Thank you Thank so you. much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Corinne, I hope the, me the minutes show that Commissioner Colville's dog actually made that vote. So. Yeah. <laughs> his name I, 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 I snuck her in there <laughs> and I, I saw commissioner bookbinder didn't make any disclosures about being a cat person so he might be biased. <laughs> okay with that it, it brings us to uh, the end of the agenda items um director eastwood do you have anything to report to the commission do. Yes, the addition here, I know to have a director's report, and it was the jurisdiction I came from. I know there's a written report uh, in your agenda, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to just kind of do three things with it. Just, uh, I guess, report out the things that you have uh, that happened at the city council. So there was a lot of discussion on the parklet program. They are extending that for 90 days, and uh, there'll be a lot of discuss discussion if that's going to go permanent after that as COVID winds down with the um, restrictions on indoor and outdoor dining. But anyway, just so you know where that's at with the downtown parklet program. Uh, the next one, the one before that was the extension of the local emergency till August 11th. And then the council did approve the one year contract on house keys, which helps, uh, which helps service the city on the, uh, the BMR program. So all that is in your report. Uh, that was part one. Uh, part two, I, I've been here officially a week. Uh, one thing I want to let you know, I've been looking at the staff reports that the staff puts together, have some initial thoughts on some restructuring. Uh, I think a little bit more on staff analysis and recommendations could help both the commission and the city council. Uh, so it's something I'm going to work with staff on over the next month or two, just kind of formalizing more, getting the facts up front and then having the rules that apply and any analysis of staff with a nice professional recommendation uh, to, to help you 
uh, and, and weaving and reading these reports. So expect that I think in the next month or next meeting, uh, we'll provide you a template of what that looks like. So it's not a surprise, but do, do anticipate that change in our, in our reports coming forward. And then last but not least, I'll just say again, happy to be here. Uh, I'm new to Campbell, a uh, longtime county resident. I was the uh, planning division manager over at the County of Santa Clara for uh, six years. I uh, was their planning commission secretary for six years, was their uh, zoning administration hearing officer for two years, actually continue to be. So really familiar with these types of hearings, quasi judicial hearings, uh, the legislative hearings uh, that go with that. Uh, but anyways, um, it's it's a whole different format for me. I come from a jurisdiction that dealt with a lot of rural issues, a lot of issues with quarries, a lot of issues with agriculture, a lot of issues with Stanford University. Uh, so going to a, a sort of an infill urban environment, uh, but it's still the principles around planning land use are, are generally the same. Uh, but with that, happy to see you, happy to be here, happy to see you. Uh, if you have any questions of me uh, that help you familiarize yourself with me, uh, more than happy to be a, a resource and be here and answer any questions you have. Um, Thank you and, uh, and welcome, welcome again. You know, please give us feedback, right? You, you're coming from a, a, a new city uh, or a different city, so getting, especially in, I, I think when you first start a new job, you get the best perspective. Um, so, uh, you know, please, as, as you see them and observe them, um, personally, I'd be very uh, grateful for feedback and things that we might be uh, able to do better. So, um, look forward to that. Will do, absolutely. Hi, um, I'm glad we have a new uh, director. I'm really excited to, I'm, I'm happy that you're excited to make some changes, see how that works out. Um, I had a couple of questions. If you don't have context on this yet, that is okay. Um, do you know, what has the city council decided about the planning commission's proposed work plan for this year? Um, at at SARC, at, not tonight, but two weeks ago, um, I noted that um, I had pushed to have commercial parking requirements near our rail stations reduced and in the wake of Del Grande redevelopment um, requiring a lot of parking. And two weeks ago, we reviewed the 2575, uh, 2585 Winchester development, which has, which despite being a five minute walk from the light rail station has the same issue. Now the planning commission uh, submitted a work plan and we, I don't think we've taken up any of the items on that work plan. Um, is there, are there plans for us to do that? Uh, what's going on with that? Yeah, I can brief, I was briefed a little bit, again, just coming on board. Uh, I know there was a lot of recommended items uh, that went forward from the commission to the council. Uh, pretty sure that's gonna get wrapped into the budget adoption, which is going to the council next week. And so what I can do is on the 22nd, uh, your next meeting, do a report back on uh, disposition of those recommendations. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, also, the RFP that the City Council put out on May, on March 16th uh, proposed that the first Planning Commission meeting about our housing element would be on July 8th. Are we on track for that? Uh, I, one more time on the question. Sorry, Commissioner O'Brien. Oh, sure. Um, in the original proposed like request for proposals for the housing element update, the first Planning Commission meeting was tentatively scheduled for July 8th. Are we on track for that? I, I don't have the answer to that question. Uh, I'll answer it with a different answer, <laughs> which is we are having a, a strategic discussion with the council uh, next week on the housing element in general, uh, bringing a consultant on board, how it links with the general plan update. I know you guys have uh, been very intimate with that and it's it's been a couple of years in the making. And we're coming to a, a, a point in the process where you have to decide, right, how these two work efforts are going to blend, be staged, interface with each other. They both result in land use changes. They both result in environmental uh, impacts, equa changes. So uh, one thing I can do is, again, next time report out, or if you'd like to listen, at next Tuesday's meeting is a strategic discussion on how to approach the housing element and the general plan together, separate. 
Uh, but again, I invite you both to, to listen to that meeting. And again, on next your next meeting, I'll give you a report out on what uh, came of that. Uh, so I would, I would very much appreciate that. No, 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 that's that's excellent. Um, Is that a public meeting? Yeah, absolutely. City council meeting next Tuesday. Oh, so that's going to be the city council meeting. Okay. Um, do you know if we're planning to continue? So a bit of context here. Um, obviously, we have remote um, public comment um, because of COVID. Uh, when we're back in person, do you know if the city plans to retain remote public comment? Uh, especially for planning commission meetings. Yeah, I think we just had a report on that this morning. That's the intent. Uh, logistics still being worked out. General, what I'm hearing is uh, no no intention of coming back uh, for in live meetings until August at, at the minimum. Uh, but I think the intent uh, here at Campbell, I know most jurisdictions, right, that, that the big term these days is hybrid, is knowing that you know the public can access these meetings much e more easily remote is to maintain the ability for the public to access the meetings remote even when you come back uh, physically in the session. Okay and um, lastly if we have bit picky questions and so on uh, can we email you and you where? I can't I can't always guarantee an answer but you're uh, I'll, I'll do my best feel free feel free to give me an email no problem. Okay, uh, that that's uh, that's pretty much what I had. Great. Is there any, anything else? Any other business? And with that, I'll thank everybody. Uh, wish you a good rest to your uh, Tuesday evening and uh, close the meeting. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Hey, well, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.